So when I got my first soda maker last Christmas, I was super stoked. And then I had to buy the first refill canister. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm gonna go broke. I love this stuff, but I can't keep buying $40 refills. What I did is I got this 20 pound tank and this refill adapter hose and a couple extra canisters. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how I, how I set this up, how I refill uh, each canister step by step. And now each canister I refill costs just a dollar and I drink as much bubbly water as I want. Stick around in this video, we'll cover some safety tips, we'll go over the equipment that you need, we'll show you step-by-step -step on how to do the refill. Let's get started. First off, some safety notes. CO2 is a gas that is dangerous at high levels, and I'd recommend getting a CO2 monitor. I've got this Aeronet 4 one that works great, just make sure that I don't have a leak that I'm not sure about. If you do experience any symptoms like dizziness, headache, shortness of breath, confusion, make sure you get to fresh air immediately. One of the things that we do when we fill the tank is I always do it near a door, near a place that I could easily get to fresh air quickly, just in case something were to break or this head gasket was to have an issue. You would wanna be really careful when you're moving this around. This has a, a safety ring around it, so if it did fall, it should protect the, the head here. So you wanna look for a tank that has that. The other thing is this tank also has a siphon tube, so we don't have to keep it upside down. So it's nice that we can just have this on the ground, much more stable than having to flip it and refill. CO2, not something to mess around with, so make sure you're, you're near a ventilated area if you need to get to, to fresh air quickly. Yeah, so that's the safety tip. Here's all the equipment that we'll need to refill our CO2 containers from our larger 20 pound tank to the one pound classic soda stream canister. So first off, this is a 20 pound food grade CO2 container. This is obviously the main item that we'll be using. You could also use a five pound tank as well. This one has what's called a siphon tube in it. And when you have a siphon tube, you can keep it upright like this. CO2 is heavier and so it goes down to the bottom of the tank, but with the siphon tube, you're able to get it up to the top without having to invert the tank. So safer, just much easier to handle. So get one with the siphon uh, tube in it. Next, this is the refill adapter hose. This is about $36 on Amazon. I got this tank new for about $168. We can get about both of these main items for about under $200. Now the refill adapter hose has a CGA320 connector, and that's what goes into the main tank here. And then the smaller TR214 goes onto the smaller canister. Those are the two main items. Another item that's really handy is a small food scale. With this, we're able to measure how many grams of CO2 we've put into the canister. I usually like to fill these up with about 400 grams. So empty, these are about 750 grams, and then fill it up to about 1150. A food scale makes this really easy to do, and we can know exactly how much CO2 we're getting into the canister. Pliers are handy. It's good to hand tighten most everything as much as you can, but sometimes you gotta get it a little tightener, so pliers are handy. A glove, if you're working with frozen canisters, these are good to freeze when they're empty. Keep them frozen, and they're just much easier to refill. We've got our CO2 monitor. A little spray bottle full of water and soap. If we do have a leak, it's nice to be able to spray and see where the leak is coming from. So that's all our equipment. So let's take a closer look at the hose and getting that connected up to um, our canister and start the refill process. So here we've got a frozen, pretty empty CO2 canister that we're gonna uh, refill here from our main container. And if we look at the scale, it's at 752 grams. So I usually like to get them pretty empty down to about 749, 750. So this is quite empty. When I look at the main 20 pound tank here, we've got our exhaust valve, which is this one here furthest away from the main tank. And then I like to call this like the fill valve or the fill kind of lever. And then we've got our main, main, I don't know what you would call this thing, <laughs> our main valve here. So main valve is off, fill valve is off, exhaust valve is off. Let's go ahead and connect our, our very cold CO2, small CO2 canister to the smaller valve here. And there's a little knob at the top of your canister and that's what gets depressed to let the CO2 out. So if I, if I depress this a little bit, you can hear the CO2 coming out. So there's a a small pin inside of this connector here that goes in to depress this so that we can fill it. So that's what this knob here, or this controller here does. You can get it closer and closer. I like having it about halfway. 
Uh, let me pull back a little bit. And that way when we connect it in, it'll be in a good position to fill easily. So let's go ahead and tighten that. And this you can just hand tighten, no need to go crazy here. And then I like, like I said, kind of get it about halfway in and I bet you that'll be good. You don't want it too tight, otherwise it won't fill. So I'm gonna put this back under our scale, which I'm just gonna reset it so we zero. I like to look at grams. So it was 750 empty. It's gonna be a little heavier with, you know, connected to the tank and adapter and everything. So we're at 931. So back to the main valve to start the filling process. First thing we need to do is actually vent a little bit of any gas out of the hose here. So to do that, we're just gonna turn on the main line. No hissing there, that's good. And just for a second, we're gonna open up the fill here. One, two, okay. Now we're gonna close everything back up, close the main line, close this, and then we're gonna vent it with this exhaust valve here. Okay, so we vented that. So now everything's out of the tank. We know we've got a good connection. So right now, no CO2 is in this tank. We've, we've got a good open connection. So we'll close this now, and now we're ready to fill. So we're back at 929 grams. So we're gonna hopefully get a fill up to, you know, 30 range, 1329 would be about 400 grams. So to start the fill, the main thing is you wanna make sure you don't go too fast. So let's go ahead and turn on the main line here. And then we're gonna very slowly open up the fill handle here. Okay, and you can hear the CO2 going in and you can see our grams already starting to go up. I'm gonna give it a little more. Okay, we're at 960, 970. Okay, I don't wanna go any faster than this. This is a good pace. Okay, so this is us filling the canister. We're already at 1058. This is maybe a little faster than I'd like to go, but it seems to be holding okay. I'm gonna slow it back just a hair. Okay, yeah, so we started at you know 9.30, so we wanna to get to about 13.30 or so. And it should take you know, a minute to two minutes to kind of fill. It, again, if you go too fast, you'll hear it, and you'll hear some hissing, and uh, it, it will not be good. <laughs> so you wanna stop everything and reset, make sure you're in a ventilated space. And yeah, we're already up to 12.40. And you can see our CO2 monitors at 871. When we vented that, it popped up a little bit. We're still within very healthy range, so now back to 4.14. So. No problems there. But again, good to do this near a uh, window or a door just uh, for safety purposes. Okay, and we're starting to slow down. The tank will, you know, as it starts to fill up, it will get more difficult to fill it up, essentially, you know, just in terms of pressure. But we're at 1322, 13.24, 13.29. And 1330, okay, so 31. I could probably get a little more in here. I feel good about getting 400 grams in there. I'm gonna close the uh, fill valve. I'm gonna turn off the main tank. Okay, so everything is off, off, off now. Now what we can do is, we're kind of gonna do the reverse of our process. So we need to get the CO2 out of the cord here. So what we're gonna make sure we do is disengage the small connector there. So that pulls the pin out. So that way that we're holding, now we've got all of our CO2 that we filled, it's gonna stay in there. So, but we do have some CO2 still in here. So now we've got everything closed, but we're gonna do this ex exhaust valve or the vent valve. So, cause we wanna get this gas in here, out of here. So we're gonna open that up and exhaust that. And now, now we can easily remove our full container with no pressure. And there we go. We've done it. I refilled our uh, SodaStream CO2 canister for, you know, just a dollar in just a couple of minutes. So a couple of frequently asked questions about refills. First off, why freeze the canister? CO2 gas itself is highly pressurized. And so when the canister is cold, the pressure inside is a lot lower. So it makes the transfer process much easier. So you have much better filling control. I've noticed when I've tried to fill canisters when they weren't frozen, a lot of times you, you hit the safety valve or the check valve that are on these SodaStream ones. And so it's just, it goes a lot smoother when the tank is cold. I feel, you know, from my own experience, I've been able to fill 
more of the canister when it's frozen. So I just keep my empties in the freezer and it just makes the whole refilling process much easier. So I, I would highly, highly recommend uh, freezing your uh, canisters. There's no safety issues with it or anything. Just, you know, keep it in a, in a safe spot in that's not going to get hit or something in your, in your freezer. But yeah, definitely freeze your, your, your empty canisters. Okay. Next frequently asked question. What if I hear hissing? Okay. So it's really common uh, when you first connect the, the main adapter hose to your main canister and you just kind of hand tighten this. You make sure you got the gasket in there, but when you connect it and you first turn on your main line, you may hear some hissing. That means this connection is not secure, assuming that these are all in the closed position. So we've got closed, closed, and we turn this on and you hear some hissing. It probably means that you need to tighten this more. So I've got these handy dandy, you know, pliers with a kind of an adjustable setting to, to, to clamp onto. So just make sure you tighten that and just give it a little bit of tight. You don't want to over tighten it, but you, Tighten it a little more with the pliers and then make sure these two are off. Try it again and just slowly turn it on and I bet you won't hear that hissing and then you know you've got a good connection here. So that's really important. First step is to make sure that you get that connection right. So if you hear any hissing, there is a leak somewhere. You shouldn't hear hissing. When, you're, when you are filling up the tank, you'll hear a kind of a, a whoosh, like a whooshing, but it's not, it's not a hiss. You won't feel any gas. You won't hear gas. It's a different sound. So yeah, if you're hearing a big hiss and you can feel in the connector and it's cold, then you need to stop everything and, and start over. Okay. How do I get my empty 20 pound canister filled? This is a great question. So when you buy one of these new or, you know, probably from anywhere, it's not going to actually come with the CO2 in it. So if we look at this, you know, it's a, it says 20 pound CO2 and then TW, which is I think Tari weight of 24.4 pounds. So this thing empty weighs 24.4 pounds and then it can hold an additional 20 pounds of CO2. So I will say this is heavy, especially once it's filled I mean, you get it, you know, it's 25 pounds, but when you get it filled, it's 45 pounds. So make sure that you're comfortable moving, you know, something that's, that's decently heavy. Make sure you get a safety ring around the head like this. It's also nice to be able to hold it with this and, and carry it as well. So where do we get these filled? I get mine filled at a local brewery uh, store. I'm here in Portland. There's quite a few brewery places and they will actually just fill this for you. They don't do an exchange. They may have an exchange process, but actually fill your own tank. It took like 15 minutes and it was $40 to get 20 pounds of CO2. So that's at least 40 bottles, if not probably 50 canisters. So under a dollar, under a dollar bottle. So there's also a company called air gas that can do canister exchanges. From what I've read, sometimes people, you can only do an exchange with them. They won't fill your own. So, you know, I have this nice shiny new canister. I kind of like it. I don't necessarily want to trade it, trade it in for a, you know, beat up one. So, but try to find maybe a brewery or a welding store often will do CO2 filling. So just Google a search kind of CO2 can uh, refills in your area and you should be able to find a provider where you can bring in your own canister and they can fill it up for you. And yeah, that's how you get it filled. And again, it's going to be quite a bit more heavy when it is full. So just keep that in mind for moving it, you know, in and out of your car and stuff safely. Where do I buy the 20 pound or five pound ones? Uh, you could buy them at, at like an air gas store. I got this one online on Amazon. I think it was around like $160, $170 shipped to me. You could also get a smaller five pound if you live in a smaller place or you don't, you know, you don't really drink maybe that much, but you still want to try to save some uh, money. You can get five pound canisters and the process and everything that we went through in this video would be all the same. I do like the 20 pound because it just feels like I'm I'm just never gonna run out. And you also get a siphon tube in it, which is nice. So yeah, definitely recommend this setup. I mean, it was under $200 for the main two pieces. Really good setup. The food, you know, having a food scale is nice to be able to measure how much, you know, CO2 you're getting in. So I, I would recommend that. Otherwise it's a little difficult to, to get a precise measurement. So I do feel like that's kind of a necessity. And then just for safety purposes, yeah, CO2 monitor is just nice to have just to make sure there's not some leak that you're you're not sensing or hearing when you're doing the refilling process just kind of peace of mind so i like that as well okay thank you so much for watching this video i hope this was really helpful for you and yeah i hope you enjoy all of your soda bubbly water and stay hydrated